multi-level marketing was one of the greatest innovations in the field of marketing in the early 1920s. The idea that sellers or distributors were compensated for their hard work made it very successful, especially in getting sales. But along the line, it turned dark and became the basis for many pyramid schemes to operate. A lot of people were scammed and were left with nothing. Relationships and families were broken and those who couldn't handle the extent of their losses went as far as committing suicide. Many regulations began kicking them out, but the similarities between the original multi-level marketing companies and the pyramid schemes were so strong, making it almost impossible to differentiate between the two. This resulted in countries like China and Bangladesh completely banning multi-level marketing from operating in their jurisdiction. But wait a minute, how did such a goal-driven marketing strategy become synonymous with the pyramid scheme? This is Bernard and you are watching African Dream Motivation. Without wasting much time, let's begin. Multi-level marketing has been in existence for about a century now. Even though its exact origin is often disputed, it can be traced back to the 1920s and the 1930s. The first company to introduce this kind of marketing was the California Vitamin Company, which later changed its name to Nutrilite, and the California Perfume Company, which was also renamed Avon Products. In 1945, Carl F. Weinberg invented a marketing system known as multi-level marketing with which he sold his vitamins. To really understand multi-level marketing, let's first talk about direct selling. Direct selling occurs when sellers buy products from their parent companies and sell directly to customers. Another marketing strategy that has proven very effective over and over again is word-of-mouth marketing. Here, customers communicate with their close relations and recommend the product to them. Now, looking at multi-level marketing, it combines these strategies and techniques to create a nearly perfect strategy to drive in sales. This is how it works. The direct sellers purchase products from the apparent organization and then make profit from a retail markup and then in addition, make commissions or performance bonuses based on sales volume from themselves and their downlines. Downlines here means other people they recruited or brought on board. This means that sellers with more others as their downlines earn more commissions and bonuses. This strategy was very successful and save the company huge costs in areas of inventory and distribution. By 1945, Nutrilite had two main distributors nationwide, Lee S. Metinger and William S. Castleberry. They took their distribution to a different level, bringing in sales like never before. However, their marketing techniques raised so many questions about business ethics. It was just a matter of time for the Food and Drug Administration to crack them down. They were served with a claim from the Food and Drug Administration about violation of two acts, which were the Section 3 of Clayton Act and Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. These acts in summary talked about the prohibition of anti-competitiveness and prevention of deceptive trade practices. These court proceedings lasted over two years, leading to the seizure and confiscation of a number of products they distribute. This was a huge blow to Nutrilite. How these court proceedings were ongoing, Nutrilite was on the verge of expanding its distributors throughout the country. They held seminars and programs to create awareness of their products and get new distributors. In 1949, Two friends, J. Van Andel and Richard DeVos, were introduced to Nutrilite Product Corporation by Van Andel's second cousin, 
the Omaskans. Maskans, who was Van Andel's second cousin, had become a sponsor of Neutralite and was working hard to spread the word about the company. The two friends traveled to Chicago to attend a seminar after they had signed to become distributors themselves. While at the seminar, they were introduced to a system that cemented their position as distributors, convincing them to go all out on the business. It was something called multi-level marketing. The system was such that, in addition to profit on each product they sold, Neutralite offered commissions on sales made by new distributors introduced to the company by existing distributors. By 1958, Divorce and Van Andel had built an organization of more than 5,000 distributors. Together with some top distributors, they founded the American Way Association, in short, Amway. And in no time, they began looking for new products from different companies to market. Long story short, they expanded into sales, services, and manufacturing ventures, which merged in 1964 to become Amway Corporation. They then bought controlling interest in Neutralite in 1972 and completely took over in 1994. With most MLM companies becoming extremely profitable, new startups were created all over the world and compensation schemes became more sophisticated. The business models of the pioneers in the industry were slightly copied by many MLM companies and the focus was on the commission and rewards for suppliers or distributors instead of creating a valuable product. More extreme marketing strategies were adopted, and very soon, what seemed like a nearly perfect business model became synonymous with a pyramid scheme. These companies relied solely on the recruitment of new members, who joined by paying an outrageous amount of money. The more people you bring on board, the more money you make. One common hook in their marketing strategy is the promise of financial freedom. In most countries, organizations often get rich quick schemes are illegal and subject to strict legal consequences. So how do these companies operate to be able to get away with these scrupulous schemes? The ambiguity of their operations makes regulation difficult to narrow down on them. By the late 1990s, many companies began using multi-level marketing system to push their products. Getting to the end of the 20th century, many international logistics companies were operational, with the likes of DHL and FedEx well established in 1969 and 1971 respectively. It became easy for the traditional MLM companies to operate in different countries and continents successfully. As Amway and the others spread across the world, many other companies saw the low barrier to entry and quickly took advantage. But some of these supposed MLM companies came with their own plans. The original multi-level marketing business model was easy to replicate, so they did that with certain variation to seal their vision. Their focus was not on the product or its quality. They were in for the money. How multi-level marketing companies became synonymous with pyramid schemes. According to New York State Attorney General, a pyramid scheme is a fraudulent system of making money based on recruiting an ever-increasing number of investors. Most at times, these pyramid schemes go hand-in-hand with Ponzi schemes, which is also a form of fraud that lures investors and pays profit to earlier investors with funds from more recent investors. These schemes lead victims to believe that profits are coming from legitimate business activity and they remain unaware that other investors are the source of funds. By 1920, Charles Ponzi, whose business model drew greater attention of the world to what a Ponzi scheme really was and its implication, faced arrest, trial and imprisonment. Ponzi schemes were forbidden and strict regulations were laid out by lawmakers to prevent such schemes from operating. Pyramid schemes were also found out and made to face strict regulations.
many get rich quick schemes were closely monitored and regulations were made to install sanity in the finance and investment industry. Many years later, potential pyramid schemes were on the edge, trying so hard to find loopholes to make easy and quick money without getting into trouble with the law. By mid-20th century, a possible solution was coming to light. After Amway had success with multi-level marketing strategy, Many single-level marketing companies began considering the highly profitable MLM business model. Traditional companies like Avon, Electrolux, Tupperware, and Kirby introduced multi-level marketing, and gradually, it proved very fruitful. While it helped many of these reputable companies, other illegal pyramid schemes began testing the waters. Pyramid schemes are illegal in most countries, and regulation frowns on them. Pyramid schemes are different from MLMs, but the similarities of their business models make it quite difficult to differentiate between the two. In a legitimate multi-level marketing business, there is a high quality product or service that is the main source of income for the business and the sellers. Referral bonuses and other compensation plans are just a marketing strategy for the company to sell more products and reward their sellers for their hard work. This is a secondary income stream for these sellers since profit from sales is their ideal source of income. Unlike the legal multi-level marketing companies, Pyramid Schemes focus on the recruitment of new sellers who pay huge entry fees. To really make some money, members need to always find new people to recruit. In many cases, there are recurring subscription payments members have to honor to continue benefiting from the scheme. This alone is illegal and the regulations will not allow it to operate. So to go around these checks, the multi-level marketing business model is copied. To replicate this, the pyramid schemes only add a product to back their recruitment and financial plans, categorizing them as compensational packages. With this in place, they can claim or defend their operations with the assertion that the majority of their earnings are from sales of products and services. This is how illegal pyramid schemes are operating as legitimate multi-level marketing companies duping millions of people of their wealth. On the outside, these schemes claim to be MLM companies, but on the inside, they operate illegal pyramid schemes. Very soon, multi-level marketing companies began facing the law over allegations similar to what was raised against pyramid schemes. The following became some of the practices of these disguised pyramid schemes. Irrelevant or low quality products or services. They came up with a product or service which was either a copy from an existing product or something ridiculously below quality. This was the most important aspect of their sketchy business model. Pyramid schemes are always about recruitment and it emphasizes on recruits, building their downlines by bringing more people into the scheme. The huge entry fee is what funds their operations. So by introducing a product, they can defend their operation by saying their revenue is made by selling the said product. It therefore looks like a legal entity using a multi-level marketing strategy to sell their product, but that is not the case. Most of the money is made by recruiting people. Most of the time, the product is irrelevant and in most cases, they make false product claims to convince potential recruits and customers for their money, which later exposes them and gets them into trouble with the law in a well-regulated country. Recruitment over sales From the beginning of this video, I explained how Carl F. Rainbow invented the multi-level marketing business model, intending to sell his vitamin product. He had a good product, which was already bringing in sales. Customers loved it, and the goodwill of his company was solid. So multi-level marketing was just a strategy to get more sales. 
Note that the main focus was on sales, not recruitment. Unlike these pyramid schemes, the focus is on getting new recruits to bring in other recruits. In other words, the inflow of entry payment is a priority. Because if no new person is coming in to pay the outrageous entry fee, how are they going to honor the promises they made to earlier recruits? In most cases, the product is below quality and has multiple competing products which are of high quality and of great cost advantage to consumers. So, in the long run, their proposed product or services are just a form of deception from what they actually do. Poor or no exit procedure or refund policy. Most pyramid and fraudulent schemes do their best to always ensure easy entry but make exits as complex and difficult as possible. This is because the moment people exit the scheme, there are inflows which are used to pay others will fall short. It refunds to it can be either a long and frustrating process or there could be no refund policy. These unfavorable predatory tactics locks distributors into the system against their will, which is an abuse of rights. In 1945, neutralized early distributors faced the law after some practices like this were brought to light. Collusion and racketing in backroom deals. This had been the quickest way to convince the masses that their systems work. Consumers or customers are very likely to invest in a business when they see people they know or in a similar situation make huge returns. These fraudulent pyramid schemes secretly reward a few participants to actually show off. These illegal compensations lure many people into putting their money into the business. The lavish lifestyle and financial freedom they pitch in their marketing pieces are backed by these secret compensations and backroom deals. People are secretly funded to show off their wealth to prove that indeed the system is making them millions of dollars. But in fact, it is just a mirage to position themselves in the market and lure as many people as they could. This is the hook that forces the hands of struggling people to take a step further to join the supposedly winning team. High Initial Entry Cost To be able to recoup a lot of money to settle earlier recruits or sellers, a highly ridiculous entry fee is required and most of the time, these amounts are assigned to a product that seem highly overpriced. In most cases, these products are difficult to sell since far cheaper and highly quality alternatives are on the market. Practically, making a significant amount of money from sales look like chasing your own shadows. It is impossible. The only possible way to make some cool money is by recruiting new people and they becoming your downlines. Exploitation of personal relationship. Knowing the power of word-of-mouth marketing, these systems highly encourage recruits to convince their close relations to join the scheme. This method had been the lifeline of new recruits in these suspicious multi-level marketing companies. It is easier for you to get convinced when someone you trust so much approaches you and introduces a business opportunity, claiming he or she is making so much money from it. If this was coming from someone you hardly know, it is different. But when it comes from someone you really trust, it looks like a legitimate entity right from the onset. This has made a lot of people fall victims. Most of the time, close relations of recruits easily fall victims because they hardly do their due diligence and visible red flags are easily ignored. Complex and exaggerated compensation schemes. Most people join these fraudulent multi level marketing companies without really understanding their compensation schemes. People are made to believe that they instantly get huge amounts of money 
but it turns out that was not the case. These compensation plans are basically made in such a way that it favors only those at the top, leaving the vulnerable in despair. In most cases, people only find out how difficult it is to make some money out of the system only after they join. And when their monies had already gone into the system, it is kind of impossible to get it back or to even exit the scheme. All they have to do now is just wait and hope that maybe something might come out of it. But unfortunately, it never will. Conventions and training events Most of these pyramid schemes organize conventions and training programs, urging current distributors and partners to convince people to attend these programs. Though these programs may take different forms, one thing that runs through them all is the preaching of financial freedom. They create a cult-like society and conscientize members in such a way that they see people outside as enemies. And therefore, no matter what red flag anyone will show them, they will still stand and move in at all costs. These and many other strategies are used to extort millions of dollars from vulnerable people all over the world. Even though they work peacefully in a lot of countries with little or no regulatory restrictions, they are in just for the money. And the moment people start discovering the fraudulent nature of the activities, new members will refuse to join and automatically their business comes to an end making a lot of people lose their hard-earned money. In the mid-20th century, when multi-level marketing began, it was promising. But in recent times, the industry has become a nightmare with countries like China and Bangladesh putting a total ban on all multi-level marketing companies and other countries addressing the issue with respect to individual companies found in their vicinities. After the law caught up with these practices, many pyramid schemes operating as multi-level marketing companies folded up, but that was just another strategy to even do more. After folding up, most of these companies stay low for a while and comes back as a new multi-level marketing company, but this time, they know their days are numbered, so their strategy now is to make money fast before the law catches up again. Some of these companies are multinational, so ending it in one country doesn't mean it really goes off grid. The world is a global village now, so they don't need to be functional in a country to operate. Many people are losing millions of dollars to these schemes, but the painful thing is that these fraudulent schemes will keep scamming people every single day because people are desperate, especially in this period of the global financial crisis. It is so sad, but that is the reality. In summary, this is how a nearly perfect marketing strategy became synonymous with the pyramid scheme. I would like to end this video with a quote from one of the greatest investors in modern history, Warren Buffett, who has a net worth of $116.9 billion as of January 2022. He said, and I quote, I never invest in a business I don't understand, unquote. The world is in a global crisis right now, with COVID-19 hanging around many economies, draining it down to the grass. Many people are desperate, but that doesn't mean you need to lose your money. Before you invest in a business, do your due diligence and invest wisely. Thanks for watching this video to the end. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and click on the notification bell. Also, share this video with anyone you believe will love it as you did. Thanks again. See you in our next video. Until then, have a nice day.